Hello, welcome to Pro Modeler. I'm Philip Flory. This particular build we're going to be doing this time is the 132nd scale Trumpeter F4U Corsair. Quite an iconic aircraft. Um, this one's going to come fully loaded. We're going to spare nothing on this build whatsoever. So we've got here is a resin aftermarket cockpit made by Quick Boost. We've got um, aftermarket full resin cockpit set by Ares. The same goes for the wheel wells from them as well. And the gun bays, full gun bays that go on there as well. We've got a cowl as well from Mastercasters to go on with this one. So basically anywhere that we can, we're going to detail it up and take it up to the next level. So we're going to do lots of scratch building, super detailing the engine using wiring and things like that. So what we're going to need is plenty of this stuff. This is aftermarket wire. This particular one is made by Model Plus, but there's plenty of them around out there. It goes from 0.2 mil, which is like hair, um, right the way through up until, not this type of stuff, very, very fine stuff, right the way through up to sort of one uh, millimeter. So it's great for things like hoses, fuel lines, hydraulic lines, things like that. So it's very handy stuff to have. You also, the other thing as well we're going to be using a lot of is a styrene sheet. This is plastic sheet. This is available obviously from um, hobby stores, obviously your local model store carry it. If not, railway stores carry them and things like that as well. Various thicknesses. Quite a handy one to have. We'll be using a lot of this time is the uh, 0.25 millimetre um, stripping, which is great for doing ribbing uh, inside of aircraft and detailing them up. Another nice one to have is the rod uh, and tube assortment. These all go inside each other so you can do various effects with them as well. That makes great for fuel lines, hydraulic lines and everything else that need to be a little bit bigger and stiffer. Then obviously plastic sheets. Best thing to do is get yourself an assortment pack and you can work through it like that. So let's get on with the build. Okay, so perhaps this is your first time using aftermarket parts or certainly moving into resin uh, and photo etch and a bit of scratch building. So I'll just do a quick run through of really what you're going to get in the box. Okay, something like a cockpit, pretty much a standard item that you could fit to any model. Normally open up the box and then what you'll get, you should get some instructions. So we've got some instructions in here which give you the rudimentary um, of how it's going to go put together because obviously in here as well we've got other um, diagrams sort of explaining how seats and there's other resin parts perhaps some of the original kit parts and everything is going to go onto the kit and everything else like that also you'll get the bag now normally um, you would hope they'd be slightly better packaged than this but what you will find is they're all going to come on little casting blocks like these now these casting blocks sometimes they have to come off sometimes you can leave them on um, normally they take a little bit of fitting to get in there but what you should get all these parts out here is a fully detailed cockpit to start with. So something down in here perhaps, if we just move the cameras in a bit, you might be able to see in here we've got wiring detail, we've got some obviously oxygen bottles going on there, lots of ribbing around and everything else like that. Now obviously on the kit part it's not as detailed as that or you'd have to put them in yourself. Now don't get me wrong, there's other parts still to go on here but a lot of the work has been done for you already. Now and a nice man has mastered this, normally taking the original parts so there shouldn't be too much of a problem to fit in. But there we go, that's all those done you know nice detail a lot better detail than your standard get in most kit parts so that's why we use them now obviously we've got things like hoses to go on there and make our way through the build um, but the trim wheels are all on there and everything else like that so what we want to do is make sure nothing's been knocked off in the bag because you do tend to find with these things sometimes you have a look in the bottom of the bag and you'll find a bit of plastic that's been knocked off um, the actual part itself so there we go that's the actual items that we've got here for the actual cockpit tub it's going to fit something like this then we've got um, obviously got an instrument panel is going to go on it and everything else and we've got a rear bulkhead um, that's going to sit on the back just like this the other thing as well you're going to get as well is so usually a metal fret now this is normally the detail for the instrument panel things like that and also you should get is a little clear part as well now these sometimes can be a bit of a handful to get out so we just open up this back bit Obviously, when you're dealing with photo etch, just try and keep it as flat as you possibly can at all times. As soon as it starts to bend up, then we tend to have troubles. So what we've actually got here, as we said, we've got photo etch fret and a clear film. <clears throat> now here, so what you can actually do is paint the back of this white, or we're going to do something slightly different. What we're actually going to do is illuminate these switches, which is something we'll talk about in a little bit but basically it will show us the instruments as if it's turned on and backlit uh, there's some lighting on there but as I say we'll cover that in detail um, when we get to that part 
So what you want to do now with all these parts is have a good look around and check for damage and things like that that you might need to take care of now. Normally they're okay, but as I said, if it has been sort of you know, through the post and been bashed around a little bit, it might take a little bit of work um, to do it. When you're dealing with all these resin parts, the only thing that's going to stick them together is super glue. So a little Loctite, something else like this, works absolutely fantastic. If you have got a small little applicator with super glue, some of them come in little pinch types, you can just put spots of glue in exactly where you need it. It's important to make sure there's no uh, release resin on there. By release resin, what happens is obviously this comes out of a rubber mold. To help it in and out of the mold, there's actually a release resin that's sprayed into the mold first. Then obviously the resin goes in, it dries, it pops out the mold easy. Trouble is, if it's very oily to the touch, that will transfer to your paintwork. When you try and come to paint this, it's not going to paint very well. The same goes for all these resin parts on this kit. What's well worth doing is just popping them in, into some detergent, some dishwasher detergent. A little sort of dish soap, give it a quick squirt, do a rub around, just loosely give it a rub around. Don't go in there because you're obviously going to knock things off. Got a soft brush, just pop it around everything else, rinse it thoroughly, leave it to dry, not in the sun or anything else like that, and certainly don't use warm water. As soon as actually you get sort of hot water onto this, anything warm, warmer than your hand can stand, this stuff will physically melt and go out of shape. Um, it goes all floppy, all horrible, and then you have real troubles with it. So just warm, tepid water will go absolutely great. Moving on here, we're having a look at the engine. We've got a lovely detailed engine that we can actually super detail this up afterwards and go right the way through the build and everything else. But I think you agree, it's a lovely piece of casting. It's in one piece, just done like that. So that will save us some sort of working around on the engine and building the engine. There again, we've got a casting block on the back that's gonna have to come off uh, because this one will then hopefully fit onto the back instead and then it will go onto the actual main aircraft itself. And there again, we've got other parts that are gonna fit on this to build up the engine. For this particular one, we're gonna add wiring to it and things again. So there again, it's gonna need a bit of a wash and things like that. We'll talk about the other resin parts as we get to them, but that's just the basics of what you're gonna get with your resin. Don't be frightened of it, it's very easy to sand. It's very easy to work with. It's just sometimes it is a bit of a hand feel getting it into the actual cockpit. Sometimes things need sort of smoothing down, sanding down, and obviously these casting blocks that they come on have to be removed as well. So you have to be a little bit careful how you deal with that. But I'll show you that as we move through. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is remove the actual casting block, uh, these areas around from them. Now, it's easy to get rid of these. They're normally little fractured. Um, it's a weakness in it, so it should come off quite easily. But there again, you want to make sure um, it comes off in the right places. So what the easiest way to do, place it down, get a blade out, okay, and just simply score around where you want to go. Okay, just keep working it round. Okay, and if you get to any thicker bits, you should be okay, but holding it firmly but loosely, if that makes any sense. You can literally just work your way around and then what you should happen is that after a few minutes of going around it all, you hope that it will start to come away. So just continue this around, just to let it come off with one part. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just click a, and you should be able to just click it off, something like that, okay? And then we can work on to our, our next piece. So we can just do the same around this large one at the back. So we're keeping it flat. As we go around, okay. start to find again, it should start to fracture off. Okay. You can do exactly the same thing again, but getting rather close to this rear. So we just cut this back so it should just come away. Just like that. Okay, <coughs> whipping around, same for the other side. Just round. <coughs> a 
Obviously I'm doing this a little bit quicker than I would normally handle resin, but it just shows you getting it off of the, the blocks. If you just take your time. So it just comes off. Okay, now this one down the base here, it's quite thick. And so we just take our time. The other way you can do it on something like this is something like this. This is a Tamiya razor saw. Okay, so what we can do is just place it on and you just chop it off. Now obviously what this helps do is keep it all nice and strong. So you will lose that strength a little bit. And some people I know will take this off. Here we go. They'll take that off before, um, after they've actually sprayed and everything else. Now the thing to remember, this stuff here, resin dust, isn't very good for your health. It is pretty nasty stuff. It's best to get a damp cloth and get it out of the way. And when you're sanding with this, do it outside or pop a respirator on or something else like that because it is particularly nasty stuff. Keep all these little bits, they all come in very handy for scratch building as you make your way through. You'd be surprised how much of it you use. But there we go, that's the basics of getting it off. Now obviously you want to clean it up. Now I've got here a little buzz drill. So I can just pop around like this. Then again, as I say, I won't be doing this too much because I haven't got a mask on. But you can polish this in. Clean up the sides and get rid of all the excess bits, just like that. But it just using something like this is quite handy. There we go. Just like that. But you get the idea, so we can clean it all up then, and then you can give a little bit of a polish and everything else like that. Get the dust all off of it and everything else. Because to be honest, that's why I do it first, because all this dust tends to go in there, then it marks, and if you're using weathering with oils and things like that, it tends to make a bit of a mess on there. So what I'm gonna do now, we're gonna cut off the casting blocks off of everything. So when I say everything, I really do mean everything on this particular build. We're gonna take them off of the actual wheel wells as well, which are gonna come off. Um, off of the back of the engine and everywhere else that has them. On your instructions, they'll show up as being gray areas up here on the front. They'll just look like these gray bits, which are telling you that all of these gray areas have got to come off because they're not used in there. If you're in doubt, leave them on and remove them afterwards. So we just get rid of all these bits. It's quite a lot of headway on this one already. As you can see, we started building up the inside resin areas. So we've put these uh, riddle puddles uh, on there, got the servos down underneath there, lots of detailed work in amongst it. Unfortunately, it's going to be one of those ones we're not going to see it that well. Um, as is always seems to be the way with these models, you put all this work in and then obviously by the time you've got the canopies on and it's all fitted away. But that's the bits on. I just wanted to show you a couple of little tips. First of all, sometimes you'll get bits like this where it's actually got a, you know, it's actually not blanked out or anything else where it should have holes coming through these. What you can actually do, if you take a file, I've got a little mini drill here, you can come in, if you come in from one side, just in like that, and then come in the other side. This just got a sanding bit in here, okay? And then just in from the other, okay? Then back from the other side, it'll clean those out makes nice little holes okay and then and also another little tip if you have clean tweezers you've got paint all over them when you try and slide bits on enough they catch on here so it's always a good idea to have them quite clean but we just do this one what I'm using is a cocktail stick uh, for putting the super glue on or CA glue so we just do the bottom and the top part like that move those out of the way and then hopefully you can see we can just come in here underneath okay we'll just hold it for a few seconds to help it sort of set it's a bit difficult for you to see let's see it does tend to be a bit Tricky getting those to bite. So that's those on there like that. We just give those a little bit of a, a tease in there as is required. But that's those back ends in there. It's all looking very busy. 
and start to get up. So what we can do, we can let that dry off, we'll get the pedals onto that and we can take care of that. We've done the framework at the back, just added little bits of frame on there, separate sprue, pretty easy call outs. We've also put together the control column, three bits here, you've got the long bit R down the back, the curve and then the, the grip at the top. So that one will come along and we'll just go to the bottom in here and sticks on the top like that. Okay, and then obviously got this rear bulkhead which will go in. So we're looking pretty busy doing like that. Quite happy with the side panels. We've done a little bit of test fitting. It all goes together very, very nicely. Now, the instrument panel itself, as I said before, is made up photo etch, just like here. Now, what we wanted to do to liven this up and to show some of this detail up, what I'm gonna actually do is light it up. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna drill out some LEDs, uh, or you could use fiber optics, or any other way, but what we're going to do, if I just show you what will happen, is something like this. The instrument panel itself is a pretty good one. So we're just carefully snipping these out. Just like so. <clears throat> Okay, so we've got those snipped out. What will happen is it's going to sit on the top in here, something like that. Okay, bring you in nice and close. Something in, he says, keeps dropping it. <clears throat> something in here, just like this. Okay, now the thing is we want the dials to show up and illuminate. So what we're going to do, we'll hold this just like this, and then we can come along with a, a marker pen. So it's not really able to get the end off. You could spray this to show you even quicker, but what we want to do is lay this in position exactly how it will be when it's all fitted. Something like that. Okay, and what we're going to do is just put in some marks and all these ones here we will drill out to be illuminated like so okay so when we take them off we've got the points marked out just like that then we can drill in is the idea using a fine bit so we can just come along with one of these so just to give you an idea how this will work, if we're just going to come into here, we're just going to drill it out just down in here. And then obviously we'll use different size bits for different size holes. Okay, that's one. And another one going to be going on in here. And then what we'll do, we're going to come up from the bottom Hopefully, as it's just done there, <clears throat> you might be able to see by the dust coming out. When these holes are bigger, we can either run a bit of fiber optic, cable, or There we go, we've got a hole running right the way through, and obviously this is on small scale. We're gonna go along small, and then we'll come along with the bigger ones for the same size of the actual photo etch part. And then we're just gonna feed LEDs into the bottom, little small ones, or we could put one, a couple of lines of them in here. The light then will feed up, and it will show through the clear acetate on here. So by the time this is backlit and has a light behind it, obviously when it's dark you can't see, get a light behind it, it will show through. Obviously what we'll do, we're probably going to put a little bit of smoke, Tamiya smoke, over the end of uh, or onto the LEDs so it gives it that more yellowy look that you tend to get with instruments and then hopefully a little bit of light will come through the bottom, down the bottom here and will show through which will illuminate then the footwell a little bit better and show a little bit of this detail up. Obviously we've got another small control area is going to go just in here 
on this one just down here. There's another piece of photo etching. We're going to do the same. We're going to burrow it into the back of these, a little bit of fiber optic, and that will illuminate there. So when we've got it all closed up, it will show through. So what we're going to do now is drill out all of these with small little holes, just to be done here. Then we'll make them bigger, and then we can have a look at fitting LEDs into there so when it goes along, it can fit in. Now, luckily for us, it's one of those situations where we've got these other parts as well, all to be getting on with whilst we're sorting them out. So we're going to get these final bits and pieces onto the actual uh, areas here. And then as you can see, it's starting to come together, looking very, very busy. The other bits we can do at the same time, the bits that we've done in here blue can be removed and taken off. I've already taken them off of this side already. So we've even taken out this rear one out of the way. This front one can stay because the bulk head is in the correct place for actually fitting you share it in this one. <clears throat> so I wonder actually we fit this front bulkhead is correct and we'll go through, but the rear one has got to come out to make way for that one going in. So there we go, that's that one out of the way like that. So with these, simple way, you know, I'm using my little buzz drill, which is great for getting rid of these because it doesn't make much damage anywhere else. But you can just fit it in. Take it out without any damage to anywhere else on the model at all, just like that. So we just get rid of all of these. Alrighty then, so this is the, the actual part done now. So as you can see, we've got those holes in there. We've also drilled a series of holes along the bottom. Now these line up then and filter into these holes at the top. So you've got two options here. You could either have one light source, well really I suppose there's three. You could either have one light source that is gonna come in um, from the bottom uh, perhaps further down here, somewhere out of the way behind the cockpit panel, something like that. Um, and then what that can be is a bulb and then run fiber optic lines or leads up and then just pop them in the top and out from here and just sit them inside each hole. Now it's probably big enough on the bottom to get those in there and you can just sit them in each one. Then as I said we have the carrier film up there, then we have the plate and we're all done just like that. Or the other way you could do it is make these couple of big holes in the bottom here or a trench and put like a bar light in and let the light just you know the residual light basically shine through at the back here if you wanted to. Well, the third option is obviously a couple of individual LEDs in there, perhaps running in pairs, uh, and that way that will light it up. Whichever way, it should work very, very well. So that's the options we have on there. So then what will happen is we've made those holes, as you can probably see up here on the close-up. They're uh, nice and big. They show through. You can probably see a little bit of light flowing through. And then obviously when this bar goes on the top here, just like this, when it's all lined up correctly, the light will show through and it will give us nice detail and everything else and it will illuminate that cockpit quite nicely. But what I do want to do is have some of the light, if at all possible, coming out the bottom here to illuminate this bottom well. Because when this sits on the top, and it's going to sit on something like this, it's going to sit on here like that. Obviously, it's going to cover up all that nice work we've done underneath uh, and the bits and pieces. So what we want to do is sort of illuminate that up, up as well. So the other point we've got to do is actually open up the back of these. We're going to do these exactly the same way. This is on the side one. We're going to have a little bit of photo etch, same thing, bit of sprue, and uh, that light will go through and hopefully it'll illuminate down the side here um, at this side panel as well and all the bits. But basically what we've done now, we've got the cockpit section all built uh, and ready to go. So what we want to do now is have a look, make sure by dry fitting it's all going to go together quite nicely. So what we can do, we can just pop this one on the side here like this okay then we've got the other side which is going to come on like that okay cockpit hopefully it's going to fit him let's say doing this all by hand guaranteed not to go together but it's worth a try to see what we're going to look like And when you see it like this, all built up, you can see it's a lot better and a lot busier cockpit than what we were looking at before. You know, certainly the level of detail in there is far superior to the actual kit one. And by the time we've got this all painted and done, we'll be absolutely laughing. Because the colours are going to be the same 
for the cockpit <clears throat> as they're going to be on the wheel wells we're going to work on the wheel wells next get them all together then everything else and then we can get some paint work done uh, and get the inside buttoned up but say so we've got to get the electrics and the other bits and pieces like that sorted in there as well okay so next up is these wheel wells now getting the casting blocks off of these can be a little bit tricky purely because of um they're obviously in a cross configuration so if you do the normal scoring and bending and ping them off like that they can be a bit tricky so what we tend to do already done one let's do the other side just popping in with a large drill bit straight in okay and just take out the offending one and what we do is the razor saw and just literally pop along and just chop down so that one would easily ping off now another little technique you can do if you use uh, coming along here, I've already done this one a bit, but literally got a groove in here to start with. So I did a couple of passes with a knife like this. Okay, and then in with your pea cutter. Now the pea cutter will make a nice big groove like this. And then what you can do, come along with your knife and finish off the actual cut itself. Let's go along like that. And then you should, here we go, copy out a click it off and it just comes off. And then you can do the same then for the one at the bottom. So if we just score that one a couple of times. And on the other side, you should be able to just click them off. Okay, then you've got a little bit of doing, so you can either trim it down with a knife, something like this, just to smooth it up. Or you can use something like the mini drill, which is quite handy at this. Okay, just to polish them up, smooth them down. Once you've got them all off totally, you'll be left with something like this. So quite nicely smooth. We don't know quite what the height difference is yet because I haven't married them up to this next part. Now on the next part, what you need to do, I've circled them in blue to show them up, a, highlight them a little bit better, but we've got a little bit of flash that's occurred down the bottom here and then at the top, we've got a pin mark needs a little bit high and a few other bits. There again, mini drill's great for this type of thing. Oops. So what we can do, we can just pop along with the mini drill and take out these points. Just sand them away. Then just polish up the area. Like that. So this ejector pin mark's a little bit high. Got a little bit of an edge to it which just catches. And then there's another one over here. You can just sand them out. And then the same, there's just a little bit of an edge. Just going on with this one down here. Okay, then when they're out of the way, like that, you should find it'll come along. This is the left-hand one anyway. And then what it'll do, it'll give us a very nicely detailed wheel well, something like that. And by the time we've got some wiring in there, a few little brake lines, things like that going on, it will give us a far nicer detail um, than what obviously the standard kit part had. So that's those bits all done and dusted now. So that's really it. Now we've taken care of those. There's a couple of things we've got to do now. We're going to have to take out, um, obviously, the little curve at the top here because the top of the instrument panel from the new one is going to replace this, which is, he says, just grabbing it quickly, which is obviously this curve here on the top is going to be replacing that one. So what we'll do is we're just going to trim out this curve here so this one butts in very nicely. There again, you can use mini drills, sanding sticks, whatever, just to take that out. And then that will finish off our sections for doing it all. And then we can get on with some paint. <laughs> 